Okay, I think we will start our session. Um, welcome to all of you who joined us uh, this afternoon uh, in this We Start online session. Just a few guidelines. Um, they are also in the chat, but please keep uh, your microphone muted if you are not uh, presenting anything to avoid some, uh, some background noise. Um, we also encourage you to uh, turn on your camera if, if you're okay with it. Uh, we like uh, we like to have a kind of more uh, informal uh, session. It's it's really kind of a more of a networking uh, moment here. Um, you can also, uh, of course, add your name, surname, and uh, um, anything in your uh, in your name uh, tag, so we can identify you. Um, they will be uh, at the end of the uh, presentation of of this session. Um, some Q&A uh, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions uh, from the chat. So you can use the chat box to, um, to ask any questions or comment on, on the presentation you'll, you'll be having uh, today. Um, so my name is uh, Emma Dumarteret. I work at the Centre for Fine Arts, uh, Beaux-Arts in Brussels, and I coordinate the Beaux-Arts Lab, the Art and Science uh, Department. And I'm also coordinating the Regional Starts uh, Centres programme, which is supported by uh, the European Commission uh, in the uh, Horizon 2020 uh, Research and Innovation uh, programme. I'm happy to introduce to you today uh, the Regional Starts Centres first consortium, as there is uh, a second one ongoing and a third one to be uh, formed shortly. And so the Regional Start Centres, what is it? It's a consortium of uh, seven cultural organisations across Europe, um, which uh, who represent the Starts uh, programme, basically, and contribute to uh, strengthening uh, this community. Um, so in this uh, Regional Starts programme, we have uh, Ars Electronica in Linz, represented here by Christina Mauer, the Centre for Fine Arts uh, Beaux-Arts in Brussels, Gluon in Brussels as well, represented by Ramona van Hansbeke and Christophe de Jager. French Tech Grand Provence in Avignon, represented by Marie Albert. Made Group in Thessaloniki, represented by uh, Mantalena Kaili. The Meet Digital Center in Milan, represented by Rosanna Tinuzzo. And Film University Babelsberg, Kunrad Wolf in Potsdam, represented by Kim Trinquan. So today we will explore the work uh, of the seven regional staff centers since uh, their creation in 2019. Uh, the seven partners have been tackling the challenge of uh, building uh, strong regional networks around uh, staff initiatives and, um, and indeed introducing staff approaches uh, in their regions and uh, to local stakeholders and uh, collaborators. So for this We Start uh, session, we wanted to invite uh, the whole Starts community actually uh, for uh, an online meetup and an exchange actually in, uh, in best practices. So each partner will present uh, one of their projects developed during the programme. Uh, the best practices include exhibition making, workshops, conferences, educational activities and so on. Uh, and we will also uh, have the opportunity to have uh, an insight in our final publication, uh, as this is uh, the closing events, actually, of, of our Regional Start Centres uh, programme. The final publication will be released uh, next week on the starts.eu website in the resources section. So this meetup is also an opportunity to exchange with you all. So as I said, um, there will be an interactive moment uh, after the best practice presentations where you can all take part in the discussion, reflect uh, with us on what a start center is. Um, so please don't hesitate to use the chat box uh, or spontaneous interaction at the end uh, of the presentations. Uh, this part, um, this interactive part will be moderated by my colleague, uh, Christophe de Jager. So what does it mean to be a start center? What are the best practices of a start center? Where do we have the most impact on a local level? Is it by organizing networking activities, by gathering starts players, by showcasing best results of starts residencies or innovative projects? 
uh, how do we connect to our regions? How do we catalyze starts initiative and thanks to which support? Um, so I will now leave the floor to Christina Mauer from uh, Asset Tunka, who will briefly present uh, to you our regional starts publication. Thank you. Okay. I was going to paint a little bit. The dogs eat, eat something? No. Um, sorry, Louis, um, is it possible to mute your uh, microphone, please? Yes. Um, and Christina, you can uh, unmute yourself. No? You cannot. Ah, because I am the host. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, thank you very okay, much, Emma. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as Emma mentioned, we are going to dive into a few best practice examples from the past one and a half years of regional starts uh, centers in the next um, half an hour or so. And as she also said, we are in the process of finalizing a publication. Um, which will be called Harnessing the Power of European Regions uh, Through Starts. And uh, the aim here was to kind of take stock of what happened over the past um, year and a half to kind of see um, which kind of collective programs were created by the partners, where we can find commonalities um, and where we kind of were successful in reaching out to our local communities and bringing together artists and scientists and um, also industry partners and companies um, and so to kind of really take a look at the actual events and see um, what was working, um, who, who we were able to reach, which targets groups, which, uh, which part of the general public who attended and was able to participate. Um, and this was uh, also kind of to see which uh, programs are really interesting to a regional audience and um, which at which approaches are the right ones in reaching out and building local start uh, starts communities and networks. Um, and so on the one hand, the publication um, includes a set of policy recommendations um, that will focus on both the, the local level, the national level and the European level. Uh, as well as an attempt to define best practice examples and also some categories for best practices, which we are going to focus on today. Um, and so what we kind of saw emerging out of all of the events that the partners were doing is that many of us tried to reach out to our local communities um, through educational events and capacity building um, led by experts in the field. Uh, we also saw a lot of exhibitions and conferences that invited people who were already active in the starts community and introduced starts to a local audience. Um, and we also saw innovative residences and pilot projects emerge um, out of the regional start centers programs. Uh, and so within this first category of capacity building, we uh, identified um, a lot of events that were focused on professionalization. And these were actually longer form and uh, could be quite intense instances of bringing together experts, students, the general public, um, inputs from artists, from researchers, and they very often focused on a very concrete challenge that the community invited and the group was uh, invited to tackle together. So um, Meet in Milano, for example, focused an event on a kind of urban planning and how we can influence urban city processes by bringing actually together the local community with experts and artists. Uh, we saw also a summer school by Film University in Babelsberg um, that invited the students to tackle the topic of 
uh, water pollution. We had events on uh, the new Green Deal um, by Gluon or uh, the Sustainable Innovation Day by Bozar. And all of these really um, share that they were focused on, on building capacity together, inviting experts and artists to share their knowledge. And then together with the general public, um, with local communities, develop new ideas and strategies. Uh, within our um, presentation and knowledge transfer category, we had a lot of exhibitions and conferences happening. And these kind of share a common factor, which is that they invite artists who are already active in the starts field, who may have participated in other starts projects. And uh, they kind of tell their stories then to a new local audience. Um, so it's really focused on, on bringing in artists, practitioners, um, who are already working in the field, um, including them in exhibitions and kind of sharing their ideas on transdisciplinary practice. And then um, these programs were often connected with workshop programs. Um, so they kind of invited the artists who participated or the researchers uh, also to host workshops that kind of connected to the exhibitions and the conferences. And a few of these also reached out actually to the young community, to young creatives and to youngsters. And then lastly, we also saw a number of residencies emerge um, that kind of had the aim of bringing together local artists uh, with startups, with companies, with a clean tech hub, um, with the aim of creating a shared artistic and creative output uh, or even um, development of prototypes. And um, these were organized through targeted matchmaking activities as well as through open calls. Uh, so this is go what you're going to find in our final publication coming next week and um, we are now moving on to invite all of the partners to share their best practices. And so thank you, Christina. Um, so I'll now ask each partner to, uh, to share with us one uh, best practice they developed uh, during the time of the project. As you said, Christina, it will be uh, one of the uh, categories of project that you uh, just announced. Uh, each presentation will just be a five minutes uh, presentation, so we can uh, have uh, a bit more time afterwards to really exchange uh, together with, with the people who are present here. Um, again, don't uh, hesitate to comment in the chat box or ask questions and we'll get, uh, get back to them at uh, the end of the session. Um, so, uh, sorry, <laughs> Christina, you are the first to uh, present one of your best practice. Yes, uh, so I'm talking today about the starts journeys and uh, this is a kind of digital showcase and uh, a kind of program of artistic outputs that uh, arose very much in connection with um, how this year has progressed through COVID-19. So in the beginning of, of the Regional Starts Centers project, we had planned some um, events in different countries. So maybe hosting an exhibition, a workshop, uh, a small conference to introduce starts and also the idea of, of regional start centers. Uh, but of course, like many other projects, we kind of had to adapt and reconsider to um, the situation. So our idea was to invite artists working in the starts community uh, to kind of share their practice, their especially their approach to interdisciplinary collaboration. Uh, so how they work with uh, other researchers, with other artists, with companies to develop artworks, to develop projects, and how this process um, kind of works for each of them. And uh, we also invited them to kind of reflect on how uh, the situation for interdisciplinary collaboration has changed um, in this year, uh, as it's becoming more and more difficult to kind of work together across borders and across countries. Um, 
So what we wanted to do was create a digital content uh, that could be exhibited both online and in physical exhibitions. Um, we made it available on the Ars Electronica website and it was also part of uh, the Ars Electronica festival this year um, in many of our programs. And the idea was also to kind of have a, a sustainable kind of overview of starts practices that could also be shown after the regional starts centers project ends to kind of introduce uh, new communities to starts um, and also to kind of, of share different artistic practices. Um, and so we invited uh, a very kind of diverse set of collaborators um, to kind of join their stories, like Charlotte Chavez, who is a scientist and artist um, working in England and kind of explore, exploring the human body uh, for many years. We also worked with Robertina Shebjanic and Chino Šutic, um, who introduced the Adriatic Garden project, which deals kind of with uh, the impact of sea pollution on um, the tiniest creatures in our waters in, in the Mediterranean, all across Europe in rivers. Um, we invited the Morphing Matter Lab, which is based at Carnegie Mellon University and um, led by Lin Yao to introduce their different approaches. Um, and they dove very deeply also into the difficulties of having a, a kind of how to keep in touch, how to keep creating um, in a lab uh, through COVID-19. Um, so as they became spread out across the globe in a way, we uh, invited um, M. Eifler, who is an American artist, to kind of share their project Prosthetic Memory, where they developed a DIY AI system um, that helps them cope with their amnesia and index uh, their memories. Um, and this is just like a, a very small extract. In total, we invited 11 artists that shared their practice. Um, and we had a, a large variety, I would say, of practices and also kind of showed how uh, people work together with companies such as Google, um, how they kind of make use of residencies um, after they finish them. So kind of how these kind of interdisciplinary collaborations and working with companies also influences their practice after residency. Um, and this whole kind of um, showcase of journeys is something that will also be available online, of course, uh, as after the regional starts project is ending. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Um, I will move on to uh, the presentation of uh, the Beaux-Arts uh, best practice. Um, so uh, most of you probably know that it's really in its essence uh, that Beaux-Arts is a cultural and artistic center um, designed uh, as uh, a place uh, where we would host multidisciplinary uh, activities. So really in the spirit of uh, the Bauhaus movement of really welcoming uh, different disciplines and, um, and uh, showcasing uh, different types of, of uh, artistic practices. Um, and there the STARTS program has indeed been taken up uh, since several years now by the Beaux-Arts Lab uh, department uh, as its core line of programming uh, of interdisciplinary uh, program. Um, so indeed at the lab we focus on promoting practices that stand between art and research um, and projects include exhibition, talks, but also alternative formats such as long-term residencies. Um, so uh, we find it interesting um, to offer an opportunity uh, of a, of a long-term residency to artists or researchers um, that would be able, who would be able to go deeper into uh, a subject. And recently, Bozar Lab has been exploring the concept of scientist in residency, uh, which was uh, originally founded by the EU AI Lab. Um, and it's, it's quite important because it's not the uh, idea of having uh, an artist going to an R&D department of a company to create a work of art or a product, but it's quite the opposite where uh, the scientist is in residency in an artist studio. 
Um, and one of the major projects we have been encouraging is called Flow, a residency between Luxdils and Luc um, This was done in collaboration with our partner in Brussels, Gluon. So Luc Thomans is a major Belgian partner, internationally renowned uh, and uh, namely famous for his, uh, his use of internet images uh, in his work. So he, he takes pictures with his phone or he finds uh, images on internet and uh, replicates them uh, in a painting. Uh, so so these, these images found on internet are really his source of, uh, of inspiration. And on the other side, we have Luke Stills, who is a researcher in artificial intelligence. He's a professor at the University of Brussels. He has uh, co-founded the VUB uh, Computer Science Department and the Artificial Intelligence Lab at the University of uh, Brussels. And since, um, since a few years now, he's been focusing on reflecting on the origins uh, and the evolution of language. Uh, using computer simulations and robotic experimentation. Um, so he's mostly interested in uh, what is called a human-centric AI, and uh, he's grown an interest in exploring um, and understanding meaning, uh, meaning through AI uh, tools and uh, neural networks. Uh, so neural networks are uh, the development of processes that mimic um, the way the human brain operates. So basically, as a, as a scientist in residency, Luke Stills has been in contact with uh, the studio of, of uh, the artist Luke Thomas to explore, uh, to understand uh, the construction of painting techniques and the meaning uh, in a painting, thanks to AI tools. So his conversation with uh, Luke Thomas has mainly been around the exhibition La Pelle, uh, which was uh, in, a, in a Venice in the Palazzo Grazzi um, in 2019 during the Venice Biennial. And what's really special about this, um, these discussions and this research project is, is really to see how a painter uh, can be interested in art, science and technology. So it's really quite new to have an artist working with a traditional medium, painting, uh, and interesting, uh, interested in, in AI and in what AI tools can offer. So the goal of the residency uh, of Luc Stills has been to develop a personal neural network um, which could inspire the artist in the realizations of, uh, of new works. Um, but the idea is also to raise awareness in the scientific field for, uh, for the, the interest in the complexity of art and on the other hand in the artistic field to raise interest in artificial intelligence tools for artists. Um, because the, the neural network would be, uh, at the end of the project, available as an open source for, for the arts community. Um, so Luke Stills has been able to, uh, to have access to the full database of, uh, of works of Luke Domans, um, and he's made multiple experiments of AI visualizations. Uh, for example, on the, um, on the visuals you have in front here, um, you can see on the, on the right uh, a painting of Luc Thomas with these pink squares um, over it. This is one of the AI experiments of Luc Stills, uh, where he compared, um, well, the AI compared the source image um, that Luc Thomas uh, used. Uh, it's a picture from uh, a mannequin um, uh, a fashion uh, show. Um, and uh, the painting he made out of this uh, source. And so the, the AI really traces uh, the differences between the source image and um, the actual painting. Um, so this is uh, called alignment. It's a, it's a type of AI uh, process. Um, and uh, Luke Stills has also used eye tracking, face recognition, uh, reverse image search on Google, etc. Uh, all these AI tools to uh, experiment on, on the work of Luc Thomas. Um, and Luc Thomas has been very interested uh, in, the, in the project. He's been very inspired uh, by uh, how an AI can analyze his uh, painting process. Um, so here, uh, the project um, in the project was that really takes the role of a regional start center in the form of uh, giving a, a platform to this research and really disseminating the outcomes of this really specific uh, research 
um, and raising awareness uh, to the larger audience uh, of Beaux-Arts and of the Brussels region uh, on what AI is, what AI can do and how artists can uh, use it. Um, so there's been several conferences uh, uh, along the, the project and there'll, there'll be an exhibition in, in March 21 in Beaux-Arts. Um, so really these events all always gather specialists from the science and AI field, but also audience from the arts field and also politicians, etc. Uh, really to raise, uh, raise awareness uh, on the latest developments of, of AI and, and Bozak can really play this role of disseminating innovations uh, uh, in the field of AI uh, linked to, to art, to, um, to a uh, larger audience. Um, I'll now uh, pass on the word to my colleague Kim, um, who will present uh, a best practice of uh, Film University Babelsberg. Thank you, Emma, for the introduction. Yeah, my name is Kim Ching Wang. I'm working at the Department of Sci of um, Knowledge and Technology Transfer at Film University Babelsberg Konrad Woll in Germany. And um, we, as a film university, um, we follow an interdisciplinary um, approach to academic, artistic, and technological research and teaching um, to the universal topic of film in its um, historical, current, and um, future um, perspectives. And we at Film University, we are offering um, 20 for um, bachelor and master programs, for example, in um, editing, creative technology, animation, media studies, or um, film music. And we are, um, we are very well um, um, connected also to our region. Um, for example, Film University is part of the Media Tech Hub, uh, which is a platform of uh, media industries, um, media, other media um, representatives, and also um, the academia. And today um, I want to present a seed activity we have organized um, within the Regional Start Center. Um, it, it is the Summer School Camilla Plastic Ocean Plan. And I can imagine when you hear the title of the um, project and the Summer School Camilla Plastic Ocean Plan, you are wondering who Camilla is. I can tell you um, Camilla is a 13 year old girl. Uh, girl um, who is living on an iceberg at the invented um, island of Oi. And she's living there with um, her friend, Jaron. Uh, and from their iceberg, they can um, discover and um, see um, the undersea world. They are seeing the sea plants, they are seeing sea animals, but they are also seeing um, the plastic waste um, in the ocean. And this um, story of Camilla is the starting point to discuss and research about um, marine pollution and the interaction and um, coexistence of humans and the nature. And um, the overall quest question of um, the summer school was, how do, you, how do we want to live in the future? And more specifically, um, can the expertise of storytelling be used to, to design pictures of a desirable world? and what, what was happening at um, the summer school, um, which take place um, in September last year. Um, we invited um, partners um, from the region and also from beyond. Our uh, regional partner within this um, summer school is or was the Alfred Wigner Institute for Polar and Marine Research, which brought in the natural science and also ecological um, perspectives. And we also um, invited European partners like the Institute for Art and Innovation in London and the World Building Institute um, Europe with its seat in London also. And we have had some, uh, several um, symposia and um, dis discussions with um, students and the students were master students, um, but also um, PhD students from Germany, from Potsdam and Berlin but also from beyond, from our um, European partners in France and the Netherlands and also in, in Sweden. And the um, methodologic, methodological um, way um, we um, applied was um, transmedia storytelling. 
that is, uh, we looked at the topic of marine pollution by, um, by we are, by film and video, by model making, sculpturing, drawing, painting, and um, sound design. And the students there, they um, um, develop concept, concepts to tackle this problem. And um, they, as I said, they had paintings, they had, um, um, they also had smaller videos. And um, these were presented at the end to a broader audience. It was a two day, uh, sorry, a two week summer school. And at the final day, um, the summer school was opened to all people who were interested from from university, but also from, of course, from Potsdam and from um, Berlin. And our um, aim with the summer school was um, to, to um, bring this, uh, the idea of, of, of starts to a broader audience. And we used um, this um, summer school, Camilla Plastic Ocean Plan, because um, Camilla Plastic Ocean Plan is, um, or the summer school is embedded in a bigger framework. There's also a project of artistic research at Film University, also called Camilla Plastic Ocean Plan. And this project is um, very um, high visibly in, in the region. And we use this um, successful um, project to, yeah, to attract the people and to, to say we are part of a regional start center at the, at the European level, and um, which brings, um, uh, which shows the benefits of um, working together with artists, um, research, and um, technologists. And the end we had to use this um, to use this uh, visible um, and big um, project to um, transmit the idea uh, was also quite um, su successful because we had a um, quite good um, media coverage, and um, the summer school also um, won a re regional award for um, 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 and an event for a good um, um, re regional event we had there. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kim. Um, I'll now ask uh, Marie Albert to um, present the best practice of French Tech Grand Provence. Yeah, thank you, Emma. So, hello, everybody. I'm Marie Albert. I worked at French Tech Grand Provence, Grand Provence in um, its hub for entrepreneurship and innovation based in south of France. Uh, it's also a label, the French tech created by the um, French Ministry of Economy and Innovation. Uh, so basically we accompany and support uh, entrepreneurs and startups and especially in the field of cultural and creative industries. Um, regarding um, our projects and our activities within the Start Regional Centers, uh, as you could uh, see with the Kim uh, great presentation, um, trying to find answers to societal challenges like climate change or sustainability is a strong ambition of the Starts Initiative and why we promote this trans transdisciplinary collaborations between art, science and technology is because we believe that these crossovers between different fields and approaches can help us to deal with these uh, very complex problems. So the project I wanted to present as a start regional center uh, is called Victor End. It's a project inviting visitors to an artistic, an artistic experience and a sensitive approach to flood in risk in rivers. Uh, so it's based on the fact that the rivers ecosystems have become a cultural landscape of its own with which cohabitation is regularly redefined like Human management can go far, but we know that domestication remains very limited as rivers will always be powerful factors capable of flooding uh, entire territories. And it's especially the case uh, in this region of South of France. So as both an artistic and a large scale operation to create public awareness on the culture of river and its risks like flooding, Big Torrent was built on a sensitive approach to the Rhone River in France uh, to be lived through immersive art and tech installations along with tools of digital mediation. So this exhibition was presented in Avignon uh, from July 4 to 17, uh, 2019 on the banks of the Rhone River. Uh, it was designed by uh, an art science agency called Bipolar 
um, in partnership with uh, French Tech en Provence, EDIS, uh, which is um, an endowment uh, fund, uh, private endowment fund for new media art in Avignon, and also we teamed up with the Festival d'Avignon, uh, who included the project in his uh, summer program. Um, so we hosted several artists from the European Contemporary Art Scene, like uh, AA Collective or Adlan Schweizer, who were invited to imagine monumental or immersive creations capable of offering a new understanding of the river by using digital technologies and new forms of expression. So for example, we, we had a floating sculpture ORS for Orbital River Station, which is an artwork that was designed um, in a start residency between the AA Collective, uh, so two artists called Ellen Evans and Aiko Hansen, in collaboration with the International Nanotechnology Laboratory uh, Center based in Portugal. Uh, so the team has worked on this big, huge uh, floating li laboratory made for observing uh, and measuring the pollution of the water. We had other art pieces deployed, um, deploying environmental scenarios in the form of virtual and mixed reality. It was a walk through the banks of a river in a mixed reality, imagining uh, possible futures and anticipatory scenarios. Um, during this project, we also organized uh, guided tours of the exhibition and also workshops for a young audience, like um, kids from 9 to 12 years old. Uh, the workshops were run by a local association because it was also very important for us in this project to partner with a lot of uh, local partners. So it was an association specialized in providing educational activities for kids, families, and specific audiences at the crossover of culture and digital fields. And the main objective of this workshop uh, workshops was to engage the kids in the understanding and appropriation of art and tech and science crossovers, but also about the flood risks, uh, the flooding risks linked to the Rhone uh, River, thanks to these links between art and science. Uh, so that's why uh, that's what I can tell you about the project. And what is uh, very interesting is that beyond uh, the start support uh, that was uh, really brought last year, uh, the project is now uh, gaining a new dimension because um, the the agency, the art science agency, who developed it with us, is now working on a bigger project uh, who would um, go all along the Rhone River. So not only in the part of the Rhone in Avignon but uh, in all the river and trying to, um, to consider not only flooding risks, but like our relationship with the rivers uh, and how also rivers could have um, a real personality, like a, a, a low personality and how we can interact with our natural environment. So they will keep on working with uh, artists in the starts field and um, keep on working on this immersive and anticipatory um, uh, scenarios uh, with the help of uh, um, VR, AR, but also uh, maybe a kind of um, a boat who will uh, propose a kind of journey with installation uh, all along the river. So this is super interesting to see that it was not a one-shot project, but this is really a reflection uh, ongoing uh, still now. So that's it. Thank you, Marie. Thank you. I like the idea of impersonating uh, a river. Impersonating, like in, yes. I didn't know the Greek, uh, language. In Greek uh, times. I think it's very actual now, like thinking about the rights of also the, the, the on, of nature and of uh, nature and environment. So, mm. yes. Absolutely. Um, I will ask now Ramona to uh, say a few words on uh, best practice of uh, Gluon. Hi, uh, my name is Ramona and I work for Gluon. Gluon is a platform based in Brussels and we stimulate collaboration between artists, world of science and industries. And our main mission is the organization of artist residencies within artist uh, research institutions or the R&D labs of companies. And we do this because we strongly believe in collaboration as a way to tackle today's challenges. And also we believe that the criticality of artists can show us real uh, new alternative narratives for a better and more sustainable future. And for the regional Start Centers project, we joined forces with a Belgian startup hub called Snowball. And Alexandra van Huizen, the representative of Snowball is 
also here with us tonight. And Snowball is a brand new clean tech hub in the region of Flanders. It's a private initiative founded by an entrepreneur, Stéphane Grosjean and Alexandra Van Heuze, and it opens its doors in February 2020. And it facilitates and promotes uh, sustainable entrepreneurship is the global mission of Snowball. Um, so they are also an accelerator for clean tech companies and they help young and ambitious companies through personal coaching and uh, their premises are equipped with state of the art facilities um, powered by a mix of renewable energy systems and the site itself tests as a, a, a testing site for uh, the latest clean energy technologies in a real world environment. Uh, and Snowball also strongly believes in transdisciplinary collaboration as a means to promote sustainable entrepreneurship and to increase its impact. And in that context, we partnered up uh, with Snowball um, for the regional start centers for the organization of a series of capacity building events, starts exhibitions, talks, workshops, targeted at the regional community of entrepreneurs, research centers, technologists, but also policy makers. Um, but we also organized two residencies and there is one residency I would like to present as a best practice here tonight. Um, one residency in collaboration with the energy experts of the company SMAPI, which is also housed uh, at Snowball, for which we invited uh, Belgian artist Peter Jan Genkels to reflect upon the sustainable development goals uh, or sustainable development goal 11, which is called sustainable cities and communities and to think about how clean technologies can develop more sustainable but also inclusive uh, cities in the future. Um, so the artwork is called Snow Hoop and Snow Hoop is a, a sculptural installation slash performance which explores the concept of energy but on the basis of basketball. And through the artist, artwork, the artist wanted to explore the interaction between the world of the game, the energy of players, but also broader societal questions around climate change. So we started with a, uh, a few questions like how can gameplay help creating awareness about climate change, but also encourage local communities to take climate action if clean tech can contribute to the development of a more sustainable community and city, but also what gives you energy and life and what, which figures inspire you um, in life. Is clean tech like basketball accessible for all, including world's underprivileged people? So Snow Hoop in itself is a sculptural installation consisting of two elements, a mobile basket ring on the one hand and a jumbotron with four screens on the other hand. And the basketball ring has been modified by the artist, which includes now a solar panel, but also different sensors from the company uh, Smappy that measure the game and the activity of the players. And by playing the game, uh, the Jumbotron is also automatically activating, launching a curated selection of videos and images coming from artistic references that inspired the artist and are feeded also through an online survey with the clean tech community of Snowball, like residing companies, employees, customers of Snowball, and many others. Um, so Snow Hope is not only a sculptural object, but it's also a vehicle for performances, which really needs the interaction of the, of the public to be activated. Um, and in this way, it's, yeah, it only, it's not a, an artwork by itself, but it's also meant as a conversation piece to evoke discussions about technology, but also about philosophy or aspirations and the driving force behind human motivation. So it really explores energy in the broadest sense uh, of its word. Um, the installation was officially launched during the last regional starts event called Entropies, which focused on uh, new narratives brought by artists towards uh, clean tech and, and the future of energy, uh, for which uh, the artist gave a workshop, but also an artist talk and a series of performances for which we also invited professional basket players to play a, a small tournament. And we had uh, the luck that we have been able to organize all our events uh, physically, despite 
COVID-19, so we plan them in the right moments. Um, so given the circumstances, it was attended by 130 persons, mostly sea level industry representatives, but also policymakers and representatives from research and um, technology. And we're very happy with the, with the project because it enabled first and all uh, a collaboration between the experts of the company SMAPI and, and the artists, but we also see that it worked as a best practice by presenting it during our events to communicate about STARS projects to a broader audience. And uh, on the longer term, it also serves as a conversation piece for Snowball to communicate and to talk about um, their mission to visitors and clients and, and partners within their field. And um, we see the installation also as a first prototype for a larger project in which Snowhoop could be installed in the public space in partnership with a larger group of stakeholders, which really actively involved uh, the citizens, but also cities. So um, we are also looking into a continuation of the project on a longer term. Um, so this was a very short best practice for Gluon. Thank you, Ramona. I think, um, yeah, the idea of having the work in a public space sounds uh, really interesting. And I think, uh, yeah, this was really inspiring as a, as a best practice, so thank you. Um, I'll now pass the word to Mantalena uh, Kaili from uh, May Group, Thessaloniki. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all again. Uh, so as a best practice from our part, we eventually selected the residencies that are developing have been developing since uh, summer and they, uh, they will be completed in the upcoming weeks uh, because the hackathon that I have mentioned to you earlier, um, uh, it will be completed by the end of the month and uh, we didn't have too much material to show. Well, the residencies, uh, we think that we managed to have some quite special um, examples of uh, um, representatives of the start agenda in Greece. Uh, I would like to, to, to comment uh, that uh, while watching our partners' uh, best practices of their talents uh, uh, and their residencies, we can see the, dif the difference to ours is that they start uh, with, um, with a topic, with an issue, addressing an issue through the residency, while what we did, it was like scouting for the talent at regions that are remotely from Athens, remote from Athens, are far from any um, institution or foundation of arts, uh, in order to give them the, uh, the opportunity to get involved. So um, here it is, the residency at the Castel Castellorizo Island at the very end of Greece. Uh, the borderline with Turkey. Um, I will uh, read just a few lines uh, because it's quite uh, complex, the concept. Uh, it is uh, uh, of the puzzle, relates directly to the game and the fun of the mathematics through learning. Uh, the idea of this com um, computational puzzle is about the interconnection between our sensory perception and perceptual thinking a digital game that aims to create a reciprocal path between the sense and the spatial perception. It is a 3D construction with solid shapes that generate shadows of 2D, 3D, and also 4D shapes, connecting the perceived to the distant object of imagination. Apologies for my background noise. It's family time here in this house. Uh, so this interaction bridges aspects of both the physical world and spaces of higher dimensions by producing different cast shadows uh, in the digital environment. These shadows are projections, views of hypercubes, and in this game, the perceptual process is related to the generalization of imagination via the observer's contact with the digital construction. So we started with this talent, a uh, really um, interesting personality, globally known, Pandazis Hulis. He's a professor for, uh, at the University of Western Australia who took the decision to return to his paternal land in Castellorizo and stay there and work from there. And he developed uh, numerous puzzles and riddles through, uh, through which he uh, teaches 
uh, maths. He also developed the, uh, uh, the puzzles uh, museums and riddles museums in the island. So he created already a reference point of uh, this uh, um, transdisciplinary uh, concept. Uh, we connected him with uh, architects and visual artists in order to, um, uh, to give a shape in this uh, concept of this riddle. And eventually all this will end up to educational material that will be shared with the students uh, uh, and, uh, at the Athens Tech College with whom uh, we collaborate quite ex extensively. Um, it's a combination of uh, pure science, uh, technology, and again, arts, uh, because we managed to have aesthetics uh, included. And I would also like to make a quick reference to our other two um, residencies. The first one is uh, Paros Island uh, at Paros Island. Uh, with Professor Yanis Melanitis from the School of Fine Arts of Athens. We collaborated with him uh, for his project on random rhetoric, again, a machine based on AI and uh, uh, which interacts with the observer's understanding uh, and sets again, uh, poses again questions on uh, democracy in the era of AI, how the observer, how a citizen may interact with AI and understands whether this is false or a true reply. And uh, it was also the concept that was hosted by uh, the Arts Electronica Gardens and uh, brought together the community of Paris Island because the School of Fine Arts is, uh, has an annex there, uh, a hub, let's say, where uh, it is recreated. It's, um, it's renovated and from next year aims to host students from around the world to work again on traditional arts and uh, digital arts. Mm -hmm. And the last talent that we scouted online was um, Konstantinos Faiz from Ioannina. Um, a true, true scientist and a researcher. He's been doing a very in-depth um, research on archeological and paleontological uh, sources to retrieve uh, elements and facts in order to um, create uh, sculptures or designs of creatures of mythical uh, personalities uh, and of um, representative of the flora and uh, fiona of uh, ancient ancient times. And uh, at uh, this specific case, he's uh, uh, reviving in a sculpture uh, a dinosaur that was uh, um, uh, re uh, discovered in Uruguay in collaboration with um, research team from uh, Wales, from UK. Uh, he worked with them closely. He worked on their, uh, on their facts and he um, uh, produced this amazing um, uh, statue, this, uh, um, this sculpture that we are bringing it to Athens in order to um, create the 3D, uh, um, the, the digital design of this and, uh, and uh, after that, uh, to have it as an educational educational material for uh, students available again at the university. So um, these are these are our updates, and it will be soon completed, and we will be able to share uh, their final work with you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mantanina. Thank you, and good luck for the end of the residencies. Thank you. Um, we now have uh, Rosanna Di Nuzzo from uh, Meet uh, Milano for the final uh, best practice presentation. Hello, everyone. Um, it is nice to meet you, all of you. And as it was nice to participate to this uh, project, and I would like to thank uh, Bozar and all partners for the great cooperation in a such interesting and fantastic project. Um, I'm Rosanna Di Nuzzo in charge of uh, international projects at MIT. Uh, MIT is the new international digital center based in Milan, created by the historical platform MIT the Media Guru that had explored the digital culture and transformation for more than 50 years with the support of Fondazione Cariplo, that is one of the most important uh, bank foundation in Italy. And um, I would like to also to take this occasion to invite you at the new Meet Center, we just launched one month ago, 
uh, you can visit at least online or you can have a virtual tour through our website. But of course, uh, we will be more than happy to have you in presence sooner or later. And uh, in the regional start center project, uh, actually, we experimented the two main best practices, uh, a multidisciplinary co-creation project for the urban innovation in partnership with the municipality of Milan and the cross fertilization lab in partnership with Asso Lombarda that I'm going to present now. And the cross fertilization lab was uh, uh, more than a residency program. Um, it was a process, it was a method uh, aimed at start creating an ecosystem, a regional ecosystem that could allow contamination processes between artists, creatives and um, industries, company, for the innovation, the sustainability, and for the humanization of technology. And as a process, we started with the involvement of uh, Asso Lombarda, that is one of the most important business, business organization in Italy and uh, in Lombardy. And that was strategic. It was strategic for several, re several reasons. Um, first, because we um, can we had the opportunity to uh, contact companies industries through them and also to uh, start creating the, the background uh, the the area of intervention so also in relation to the perceived needs of company to to then work um, with the artist and uh, indeed the second step was the launch of a call uh, that was um, addressed at uh, under 30 um, digital artists and we received more than 50 projects, very interesting, and we invited all participants, all artists to join uh, a training session uh, with the aim to make them familiar with the business context, so giving them tools to, to start entering the business environment. And um, uh, in the meantime, we worked with Asso Lombarda to, to inform, to make uh, companies aware, and then select five um, industries namely Sky, Artemide, Sapio Group, Tarpini Production, and Manchik Jungle, um, very different companies, also in, both in terms of size and field, also because we wanted to experiment different settings. And uh, the matching uh, happened during a meetup um, where we invited all artists to, to present, to pitch their projects and uh, we invited uh, the companies to, to be involved in the jury uh, together with uh, our curator Maria Grazia Mattei and uh, together with Asso Lombarda. And after this uh, meetup we selected, uh, we matched five artists with the five companies that then started two months cooperation uh, residency um, with uh, very interesting uh, results. For example, uh, the unknown project uh, that was aimed at combining the Artemide light system and products with the sensor to, to explore in new in immersive and interactive scenarios. Or the other project, LX3, uh, that um, implemented augmented reality tools to innovate the marketing. Uh, or uh, we also, the artists also worked on the well being with uh, using AI algorithms for the well being, the company well being. And one of the most interesting things of this process is that the five projects are keep after the, the end of the residency are keep cooperating with the company. And uh, this is of a great satisfaction for, for, for us. We are very happy for the artists and uh, for the company as well. Um, 
this process uh, should uh, actually the, the last step was uh, was supposed to be the organization of a showcase at the end of November. Uh, we decided to uh, to register um, interview to 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 tell this uh, fantastic stories, and we decided to postpone the the showcase after the project end because uh, um, it is worth uh, spreading uh, these uh, works uh, in presence with the audience also academic center also because um, most of them were designed for the meet immersive room and uh, the next this slide so just to conclude okay thank you and uh, this um, this process was included in the bigger frame, uh, as I said before, for the creation of the ecosystem in, uh, in 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 Lombardy to start promoting this process. And so we linked it to the symposium we organized as a networking uh, activity aimed at exploring. Um, when industries meet uh, creativity, creative people uh, in uh, three main directions. So innovation, um, uh, sustainability and humanization. And uh, we uh, organized this symposium in three steps. So exploring the international scene of success stories of real contamination uh, artist industry for the innovation we then um, organize a workshop to co-create strategies tailored for the regional scenario and uh, then we worked with the relevant stakeholders in order to to design um, a kind of uh, policy recommendation. So to keep exploring, to keep boosting and promoting this process uh, uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Rosanna. Thank you very much. Um, as uh, it's already uh, three past six, um, in any case, it's time for, for people's reactions and uh, comments on our projects, on our program, uh, maybe uh, yeah, remarks on how uh, how they would uh, like to see uh, a regional staff center in their region. Um, so I I also wanted to uh, welcome here with us uh, tonight the uh, two um, two members of the regional staff centers number two um Luis Girao and Simona Bucchielli so thank you for for being with us to, tonight and um please uh, you're welcome to of course um participate uh in the discussion i think uh, Simona you you actually have a uh, uh, an open call uh running um today um uh, do you want to to maybe say a few words about it Sure, thank you, Emma, and thank you for uh, the invite. Um, so yes, we we as Nesta Italia are a third regional center for Piedmont, which is a region in the north of Italy. And uh, one of the initiatives uh, that we uh, are implementing on uh, the territory is um, a start open call called uh, City of the Future. Uh, it is dedicated to artists and creatives uh, from uh, all over Europe. And um, uh, so what we have done is basically uh, involved uh, a few uh, local partners, uh, scientific partners or industry partners. So um, we have uh, some, some local industries such as Kumau, Iren, or foundations, or sorry, or um, research centers such as Easy Foundations. Uh, foundation or uh, the Nexa Center um, based both in uh, in Turin, and these partners launched uh, a social challenge uh, related to the city of the future. And artists and creatives can reply with uh, with an artistic concept. So um, they have the possibility to um, run a residency in the spring. Um, 
2021, so from mid-February until uh, May. And uh, we will have three winners uh, who will receive a prize of 17 euro each. So it's a good opportunity to come to come to uh, Piedmont, come to Italy, and start these collaborations with some local partners uh, um, uh, using data and technology to contribute to uh, a more inclusive, uh, sustainable, and green uh, cities. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank ah, you. I've forgotten I to say one thing. The deadline yeah. is November the 30th. So. <laughs> okay, maybe you can uh, put in the chat maybe um, a link to the to the to the open call. I think some some of the people here would be would be interested. I'm sure. Um, sure thank you. And so uh, we have a few questions actually in in the chat box. Um, Christophe um, Christophe de Jager, uh, would you like to moderate these um, these questions? Actually, there was one about uh, the Bozar project uh, flow. Um, from Alexandra Van Panois, and uh, I imagine that uh, you would be uh, more fit to answer it because you were at the beginning of of, uh, of the flow project. Hi, am I for just me? It's Alexandra here. My yeah. question is general for all the starts, the regional start centers. How do they start the project? Do they start with? Ah, okay, okay. Or do they start from a site or an artist that they would like to work with? because I think it makes a difference in terms of how much time is needed to uh, effectively start a project. If you start from a challenge and you need to do scouting, you lose time that might be precious. If you start from a scientist or from an artist, you might not work on this societal challenge that you want to tackle. So that's my question. <laughs> Maybe I can give you an answer, Alexandra. Um, so I also saw the more general question on how the recruitment is being organized in regional start centers one. I can say the chaotic and different uh, in all the different partners that were part of the consortium. Some partners already knew beforehand with which artists or companies they wanted to work. Other ones uh, realized this with an open call. If you look now at the open at the tenders for the new regional start centers, it's obligatory to organize open calls for uh, artists. So, in the case of the collaboration between Luc Tiemans and Luc Steels, it was um, an initiative where we asked Luc Tiemans if he was interested in technology and science, and once he said yes, we asked him in which. Uh, technology and this was artificial intelligence and then quite practically we came to the name of Luke Steels because he was the first one in Europe to found uh, artificial intelligence lab at the University of Brussels. He was also uh, a great uh, and important expert in this uh, field and uh, we brought them together. It was just uh, finding out if they were willing to collaborate because you need some sort of good synergies between the scientists and the artists. They have to be willing to work together. And this worked out uh, very well. Um, but coming back to this, uh, and that will also be reflected in the policy recommendations that you will be able to find on, in the Starts ecosystem site online, uh, it's that we still have a lot of work on the right methodologies for the organization. organize an open call is only one of these things that has to be developed in the methodology, but also how do you define the outcomes? How do you organize such an intermediary process? There's many questions that are going uh, with the organization of, of such an initiative. Um, <clears throat> I think a good example of intermediary processes or the organization of an open call is the Studiotopia program, uh, which you can find on studiotopia.eu. So there uh, we asked uh, 13 artists that were selected by the cultural institutions to make a summary of their artistic practice, but also to say in which sustainable development goals and in which technologies they were interested as a person. And on the basis of this definition, scientists were in to 
if they could collaborate with the artists. So they had something to talk about. There was a general or a common interest in a certain SDG and also in a certain technology. And on the basis of this, you could start to connect the different people. And this worked uh, pretty well. I can say that in, in Europe, there's one organization or maybe two who have been developing methodologies. This is Info Art in uh, uh, Berlin. Uh, but maybe uh, I go back. I go with Louis, who does the regional start centers too. I wonder if the, the follow up of our program has been devoting more attention to the methodologies. Uh, Louis, are you there? Yes. Hello. Hello, Louis. How are you? I'm in the cave. <laughs> um, well, in the in the first of all, thank you very much for. For the invitation um, in the in the starts centers the the, the starts towards sustainability um, we have uh, different types of activities so not a, not and then not necessarily focused on the collaborations per se uh, we see the the collaborations as a, a sort of a, a, a way to reach the industrial, uh, the regional industrial uh, sectors, yeah. So uh, the, our focus is not necessarily in how um, uh, how to engage uh, the different parts because we we were part as, also of uh, Vertigo, um, and there we learned a lot, right? And there's many different ways of doing the same thing, and so these methodologies are published, and we we we, we collaborated. Uh, in 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 um, um, in developing them. So uh, my, our our uh, focus is is exactly in in engaging uh, new players uh, and mainly players that have uh, a role in developing uh, what we call the digital innovation hubs in Europe, or they are part of these digital innovation hubs in Europe. Um, and uh, well, this is clear with the work, for instance, that we do with the uh, Innova Camera in, in Rome, that they themselves are uh, involved in, in the digital center. Uh, for instance, the, the excellent work that, that Nesta Italia has been doing uh, with, with, with their activities with Compagnia de, de San Paolo um, and others that are also engaged in these processes. So. Um, just to, to sum up, our focus is in, in concrete uh, engagement with the local ground and not necessarily uh, in the collaboration between uh, the participants of the, of the, say, the artistic, scientific and technological projects. Uh, thank you, uh, Luis. Uh, maybe we can both answer to the question of uh, Romy. Uh, Romy, are you there? Can you maybe ask your question for all of us in real? Romy? Is she still with, still with us? Hello, Romy? <laughs> I'm, hello. Hello. Could hello, you yeah. No, I got it. I have some, um, I have some questions about, is it, um, I hope my English is uh, quite good for this. Um, am I right that you just have this regional centers or you just recruiting for regional start centers or they are already there? Uh, in answer to this uh, question, so um, Regional start centers are pilot projects. So the European Commission launches open calls for regional start centers. And for the moment, there have been three open calls. So two times there have been uh, two consortia for regional start centers all over Europe. And now a third is in the making. So many different consortia applied. And I think by the end of the uh, we 12 new regional start centers spread all over Europe. So this process is already uh, is already in the making. Uh, but I think that also in the future, there will be different open calls to have even more regional start centers all over Europe. 
Ah, thank you. That's good to know because uh, at the moment, um, all with this video calls, I have really problems not to be in a, a speak with person in real. <laughs> but um, yeah, we will get it. So at the moment, um, I have in um, I have three different business models for the new world, and it's all. Um, yeah, I, I will go to some companies for financial, like EU Verion, and uh, what includes uh, how to build up uh, the startup. But this is perfect for um, stars to combine um, artists and uh, technology. So how is the way uh, to the right, um, yeah, Reihenfolge? Uh, in the right way. So, uh, uh, is it because I uh, try uh, very often, uh, I was looking for the programs, but this is just already if I'm an artist to go to the project. But if I want to um, build up a company, what includes the artists and the companies, this is just an, another, another way. I just was thinking uh, yes. about. Um, Babelsberg um, uh, station where you have in Babelsberg the film industry. This would be a great, um, maybe a great um, point to to get a uh, transfer with um, what was the name of um, Kim Tin Kwang to talk with her about possibilities to come in this program. Uh, Romy, Lou is here. Um, I just wanted to add uh, two, two ideas here. So what, what Christoph um, explained is the process that is kicked uh, directly from the European Parliament through the European Commission, right? So there, there is mm -hmm. a number of, of, uh, of projects that were approved and some that are in the making and I guess at least two more years to come. Uh, of consortia. Now, these projects um, are also supposed to extend their network to, um, to, to other regions and other potential partners. So in that sense, you can get in contact with us or with me. Uh, I send you my email yes. and we can see how can we support you. So we have the possibility and support you in developing new activities, understand your case, and so on. So I'll, I'll put my email in the chat and please contact me if you will uh, to see what the ideas you have, where are you, and how can you yeah, support you either financially or, or to connect you to, to partners we have in local. Now, there's another thing which is uh, important, which is the Starts brand. Uh, the Starts brand. Mm -hmm. Um, is something that can be uh, extremely valuable, I guess, from what I understand your question is. Um, if you want to develop business model around these uh, activities of bringing scientists, technologists, and, and, um, and uh, companies um, to, to trigger some sort of, of uh, social or economic innovation, um, you, you, you're free to use the Starts brand. The, the Starts brand is something, it's a public good from the European Commission that you can use, right? Uh, yes. you, don't, you don't need authorization to, to do it. And you can, of course, contact us to learn from, as, um, as Christoph was, um, was saying, you know, there's different methodologies of integration of different partners and, and different sides. They are published. We can point you to those publications or we can simply talk to you as you wish. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Louis. Maybe because uh, our time limit, uh, we crossed it. But um, I would like to say, to invite Alexandra van Neus, who wants to say how a company relates to the Stats ecosystem. Um, she's also gone. Uh, no, I'm no, sorry. So, no, but, uh, no, but you you fell uh, the the connection was was not that great so i didn't hear what you were asking yes i'm sorry so um romy if i understand
understand well is coming from a startup hub or more the economic side within the starts ecosystem and snowball has been participating in regional start centers too and i thought it was interesting if you could explain very shortly what's in for the startup hub snowball in such a collaboration mm -hmm. so the mission of snowball so we are uh, fairly new we opened our doors in february 2020 and we are a clean tech hub and we promote clean entrepreneurship so we uh, have several R&D projects running with universities and academic institutes and we develop new technologies that will support our planet and uh, will help uh, mitigate climate change impact um, and for us we're all about science and technology but we believe that to uh, have impact we need to create a broader uh, platform uh, so that's why we wanted to include arts as the third dimension that we work on because through arts uh, and through uh, visualization and through different perspectives on societal challenges we can really uh, approach people who would not typically be interested by science and technology as such uh, the things we do are fairly complex um, they're not for they're not uh, every day we work on uh, projects with a long horizon. Uh, so for us collaborating on uh, regional starts and collaborating with Hluon, who was really an excellent partner to us and uh, who really helped us in the, the residencies and in the organization of the events and so on and, and to bring uh, interesting and new perspectives to us uh, was a way for us to broaden our impact and to have more reach uh, on a local level to bring people to Snowball who would not naturally come to us and, uh, and create a platform for climate, uh, for cl climate action, basically, in a nutshell. Thank you, uh, Alexandra. There was just one last question from or for Meet. Yes, there was a question for me in the chat. Um, Rosanna, could you give us the link to the project of AI measuring uh, the well being in companies? Yes, I already answered. Ah, that, sorry. Uh, yes, I have a presentation. It is uh, just a prototype to, to now, so I can give the presentation to. to to who is interested. So she already sent me the email. Okay, 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 I understand. Great, so I think we'll conclude here. Uh, thank you very much for being part of this uh, session. It was really great to have uh, to have you all with us uh, tonight and and seeing that the the stars community is 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 still uh, holding up to to this um, to these strange times. Um, so good luck to everybody for uh, for your projects, uh, ongoing uh, projects, and of course don't uh, don't forget to follow the newest uh, open calls and opportunities on the starts.eu uh, website. Thank you very much, and uh, see you soon.